we never really know what we're expecting and the technology keeps delivering little surprises here, there and everywhere. We still don't really know what we're looking for until it actually leaps out at us. There's so much hidden on there. The newer technology, we can just see so much more and in so much more detail. It just strengthens the story. This machine is a prototype machine. We've managed to record amazing things, things that are really impossible to see, things that are impossible to photograph using conventional photography, and that's what makes it really, really exciting. The Archeox technology that we're using is developed by uh, the Factum Foundation. We're very lucky at the Bodleian because we've been given one of their prototypes, which is called the Selene. It uses photometric stereo as its principle of recording three-dimensional information. So the four source images, which are used to process into these texture maps, are lit from different directions, so top, right, bottom, and left. And the software is analyzing differences between the position of the light in those four source images, and that's how it works out height information. And we're using that to record what we call low relief originals. So originals which are not actually 3D, which are mostly flat, but we're recording the texture we're doing it for two reasons. We're making discoveries, and we also are recording data which can be used to produce three-dimensional facsimiles of originals. This isn't the actual Goff map of Britain. It is a stunning new facsimile. And they did this wonderful 3D scan. And this is the oldest surviving purpose-built map of a country or a region. And there's nothing like it that survives anywhere. 2015 that was the first 3d recording of the of the goth map and that revealed lots and lots of these pinholes over 2,000 pinholes in the surface of the map what we soon realized was that the pinholes only appeared on the front of the map and they didn't go through to the back of the map and this led to the realization that the goth map dating from around 1400 which lives in the Bodleian Library is actually a copy there was a map before the Goff map, which existed in and around 1400, which was used as a model and would have been pricked through the original and then indentations made onto our map, the Goff map. We've also used other scientific techniques, sort of Raman spectroscopy to work on the pigments. We've used hyperspectral imagery. We've used multispectral imagery to bring out some of the things which we can't see with the naked eye. A lot of them are Things like the place names, which there was a book written in 1958 which says these are the place names and nobody's really challenged that. And now we can challenge it with improved imagery and we can see that the vast majority were correct, but some were not correct and we've been able to correct those. A recording using this 3D technology is really interesting to researchers because they get a better idea about what this precursor map was like and that may even help us to, to date the precursor map. In this image we can see all of these tiny creases, the pinholes, and in some cases there are scoring marks. So compared to previous 3D recording systems, this is much, much higher resolution. We think about four times the resolution of technology which preceded it. Um, we're actually building very large images using image tiles and creating very, very big recordings. With the Goff map, we actually photographed that as 85 image tiles and stitched all of those together. One of the really exciting things with the newer technology is being able to measure the size of the pinholes. Now, they're tiny little things, but the depth, the circumference, everything, we can now measure that. And that just all adds to the scientific background. We can see how the map was made. Our job now is to look through our collection and see if we have anything as perplexing and enigmatic as the Goff map and um, see whether Archaeox can help us. It's the responsibility of every institution to record their originals as best as technology will allow. And if you're also, at the same time, making recordings freely available as we are on our digital platforms, that means that researchers around the, the world can look at our originals in a way that they, we haven't been able to present them before.